Hello everyone, Jonah Dempsey here in Ibiza, Spain, and I'm going to do a video on the elements of compatibility, the mood setter. This is essentially uh, based on the work of Steve Rhodes, and I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about what he's discovered about mood. Now, a little context, Steve Rhodes studied human design. He was actually quite an avid student of human design, sort of a late student of Ra. Um, interesting guy, made some treks to meet various key players in human design, and obviously learned a lot from it. Ended up actually publishing his book, The Prophecy of Ra Uruhu, and then developing his own system called Bantu, which is based on the Ban and the Tu, basically the yin and yang crystal um, that, that Ra, I mean, that the, the, the name is based on, I should say, that Ra learned about in his encounter with the voice. Um, Steve Rhodes called his system Bantu as he believed that the knowledge brought by Ra was meant for everyone on the planet, something Ra himself said many times. And then what Steve Rhodes ended up doing with his work on Bantu uh, is really developing his own theories around that. You can find his work in his books, The Prophecy of Ra Uruhu, which really doesn't actually stray from telling the story of human design, and then The God Code, colon, We Are Robots, exclamation point, which is the one where he really goes into his own theories. You can also find his website, B-A-A-N-T-U dot com. That's B-A-A-N-T-U dot com, Bantu. That is Steve Rhodes' spelling of Bantu. Uh, Ra preferred to spell it B-H-A-N space T-U-G-H. But um, Ra never really had the, the spelling given to him. It was just the, the name. So, okay, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Steve Rhodes calls the mood setter. And uh, this is an element of compatibility. So this topic is sort of an introductory level of compatibility analysis. For those of you who've already seen my, my videos on Steve Rhodes on Substructure or who caught my talk at HDHD this year, this will be old news. But if you haven't, let us continue. Steve Rhodes claims, and I believe this is true, to have found the secret to happiness. Quite a funny thing to claim, right? Uh, nowhere in any of the Ra's tens of thousands of hours of teaching do you really find Ra talk about happiness. Ra talks about finding satisfaction if you're a generator, finding success or peace or surprise, but he doesn't really talk about happiness. And I imagine Ra might have scoffed if you asked him, does this, does human design give you the secret to happiness, right? Um, in fact, after one of Ra's first public lectures in Taos, New Mexico, maybe even before the lecture, actually, um, he was sitting around getting ready for the lecture and someone came over to him who had seen the, the flyer, had seen the ad in the newspaper, and they said, uh, you don't seem very happy. Almost like uh, you claim to be enlightened and you don't seem very happy. You know, you claim to have these secrets and you don't seem very happy. And Ra kind of laughed at that because that was typical of what he saw as the, the not-self, the sort of homogenized belief that everyone has to be happy. I mean, Ra used to say that after the seven years of deconditioning, sometimes he didn't like that person very much. He liked them more before they deconditioned. I'm actually reminded of um, a story, an anecdote from Thelonious Monk, the jazz pianist, from a bassist of his. The bassist had played with Monk for the very first time and had uh, started playing on Monday and finished on Friday. And Monk didn't use any sheet music. Everyone just had to learn by ear. So on Monday, the bassist was really struggling. And Tuesday, he thought he couldn't get it. And Wednesday, he started to finally get it. And Thursday, he got it. And by Friday, he played it perfectly. And Monk said, after the Friday set, when um, the, the bassist said, you know, I think I finally got it. Monk said, I liked you better Monday. And that's the kind of idea here, right? I mean, that's definitely the idea from Ra. Well, all the same... All the same, I think there is a real key here that Steve Rhodes has discovered, and he does deserve credit for it. Right there at the tonal level of substructure, happiness was hiding. And I don't mean that you're going to be happy forever or some sort of uh, California school of sunshine, psychology, endless, toxic, positivity, spiritual bypassing thing. I just mean the secret to mood. 
And because we're talking about this in terms of compatibility, what this is really saying is that one of the fundamental elements of compatibility is mood. Now, I also have one more caveat, and I've made this caveat many times. Those who've watched my videos will be well familiar with this. Compatibility does not mean you're supposed to be with that person. In fact, um, the people we're supposed to be with are blessings and curses to us. I don't think it's all relative. I don't think that there's no such thing as someone you're quote unquote supposed to be with. I do think there are people we're supposed to be with, but that we're supposed to be with them in spite of our compatibility or lack thereof, not because of it. W what am I saying here? That you might be somebody that you have very low compatibility with that nevertheless you have work to do with them in this life. You're meant to be with them, so to speak. So what is compatibility then? Well, actually, Steve Rhodes gives us a wonderful answer. He says, compatibility is how long you can spend with somebody before you need a break. That's what compatibility is. How long you can consecutively spend time with someone. And I do think Steve Rhodes had identified three key elements of compatibility, mood, resilience, and reactivity. And what are the make and break issues of a relationship? Why do people break up? He's in a bad mood all the time. She's always in a mood. He's just not resilient enough. They are too resilient, funny enough. Nothing gets through to them. They have uh, no reactivity. They, they're totally unreactive. I, I guess the too resilient would almost be like they're bored, you know. They, they need more, they're not challenged. Or they're too reactive, or they're not reactive enough. I give them a gift and it doesn't even affect them. They're disaffected. So too much reactivity, too little reactivity. Too much resilience, too little resilience. Uh, not in a good mood, right? They're, they're always in a mood. Each day is like, I don't know what mood I'm going to get from them. And of course, some of this can be emotional wave, and some of this can be melancholy from individual circuitry, and some of this can just be plain old level of maturity. And I don't just mean in this life and this physical, chronological, biological age, I mean level of, mat of maturation over many, lift, over many lifetimes. Uh, it can be, you know, it can be um, level of initiation, as the theosophers call it. It can be all sorts of things. So I'm not trying to say that this is the key. This is just a powerful key, or three keys, really. The key to mood that we're going to be looking at today, the key to resilience, which we'll look at in the next video, and the key to reactivity, which we'll look in the, in the final video of this three-part series. So the key today, tone, what Steve Rhodes calls the mood setter. Tones one and two have their mood set by success. The splenic tones, this is the spleen, this is the physical, the world of the physical. So if you have tone one or two, on your personality or design sun earth, your mood is set by success, particularly material success in the physical plane. Having enough money, having more than enough money, having enough partners, having more than enough partners, uh, things like that. You know, more than enough potential partners, having backup partners in case your partner gets eaten by a saber-toothed tiger, things like that. Being able to attract others, things like that, right? If you have tone three or four on the personality or design sun earth, this puts you in a good mood based on respect. Your key is respect. This is the Ajna binary. This has to do with understanding. This has to do with knowing. If somebody respects you for what you know, if you have an understanding, mutual knowledge of each other, connection around that, uh, being able to tell jokes and make the other person laugh because they get it, they get you. And then on the tones five and six on the solar plexus side, so that was the mental world, right? Now we're looking at the emotional world. Your key is feeling, which Steve Rhodes characterizes pretty hedonistically. I was in a conversation just, just a couple days ago, um, and the folks in the conversation were saying, no, it's not hedonistic, it's so much more than that. Well, hedonism may be reductive. I think he just uses the word feeling, we don't need to reduce feeling to hedonism. It can also be feeling good because you've done something good in the world. Feeling good because you've volunteered at the soup kitchen. Feeling good because you've had a deep emotional connection. But it can also be pretty hedonistic. Feeling good because you got a massage. Feeling good because you had a nice meal. Feeling good because you had an orgasm or an erotic sexual experience, right? 
feeling good because because you've been been able to have some sort of emotional relief from stress or from pressure, things of that nature. And, you know, we can call it hedonism. We can say that that's, that's, you know, reductionistic. Both are true. I will just say, if you have tone five or six on your personality or design side, be careful about what stresses you put yourself under. Say you have tone five and six on both sides. So you have no success tones, no respect tones, only feeling tones. Then you probably shouldn't be an airline pilot. Why? Because it's stressful. You probably shouldn't be a military captain. You probably shouldn't be a, a heart surgeon. Why? Because these are life or death situations and you're probably not designed for that. Now, I'm never going to say never, right? Because there's somebody out there who's tone five or six who's some sort of savant heart surgeon who's going to prove me wrong. But I'm just saying, by and large, you're not really designed for these things. Now, how does this do, have to do with compatibility? Look at your nodes. If your nodes are first and second uh, tone, you're going to be drawn to success-driven people. If your nodes are third and fourth tone, you're going to be drawn to respect. If your nodes are fifth and sixth tone, you're going to be drawn to feeling. So again, first and second tone, splenic binary, the spleen, the physical. Third and fourth tone, ajna binary, the mental, knowing, understanding, respect. Uh, The fifth and sixth tone are the feeling, the solar plexus binary. And if you have these in your nodes, these are the kind of people you're drawn to. So you get all sorts of interesting combinations. You get someone with only success tones drawn to someone with only feeling tones. And you get into these arguments where they're telling their partner to just chill out, right? Because they have feeling tones in their nodes. You get somebody who's only feeling tones in their sun earths. So they're somebody who is naturally very chilled out. And they have only success tones in their nodes. And they're trying to get their partner to earn more money. And you have every different combination, right? You can have combinations as well. You can have feeling tones on the design sun earth and success tones on the personality sun earth and respect tones on the design nodes and feeling tones on the personality nodes, right? So you end up with all of these different complex, uh, complex aspects of it. In fact, I know I just said we're going to do three videos. I think we actually are going to do six. We're going to do the introductory for each of these. Then we're going to do a little follow-up video going into some of the complexities. So I'm going to wrap this up for now. I've given you the keys. Thank you, Steve Rhodes, for discovering these keys. If you have tones one or two on your personality sun earth or design sun earth, one of your keys to happiness is success. You're naturally competitive. Sorry to break it to you. Some people don't want to admit this about themselves. There's a real stigma against being competitive, but you naturally need to win on the material plane. You need to win in the competition for limited resources, whether those are human resources like partners or whether those are physical or material resources, money, things like that. If you have tones three or four and either the personality or design sun earth, you need to be respected. You need to be admired. You need to be quote unquote famous, at least in your circle. You need people to admire you. You don't want to be publicly humiliated. Humiliation will put you in a really bad mood. And part of what puts you in a good mood is going to actually be being respected by people. So yeah, you might be a little bit of a name dropper. Deal with it. Or the others can deal with it. Um, that's what puts you in a good mood. If somebody doesn't recognize the famous people you know, you might be annoyed. If you've seen a lot of movies and somebody else doesn't know those movies, you might be kind of annoyed, right? Because um, part of the respect thing is having mutual understanding and you want to be understood. I mean, the the thing that will put you in the worst mood of all is somebody misunderstanding you, misunderstanding your desires, misunderstanding your point of view, misunderstanding where you're coming from. So this is almost like being a projector, right? You can be a non-projector type. You can be a manifester, manifesting generator, a generator, a reflector. But if you have respect tones, there's going to be some element of wanting to be seen by the other and understood by the other and recognized by the other that puts you in a good mood. And if you have feeling tones, tones five or six, you're going to need a certain amount of chilling out and physical pleasure and emotional pleasure and mental pleasure, all these things. I mean, I guess it really depends what side it's on. If it's on the personality side, more mental. If it's on the design side, more physical. But either way, you're going to, you know, if you have a job that doesn't allow you to play music and you have tone five or six, that's going to be hard because music feels good. And if you're a taxi driver or an Uber driver, you're going to want to kind of be able to, to play some music. You know, you're going to want to be able to, to groove during your work. And, you, and if, if you have a home that's not very comfortable to hang out and it doesn't have good lighting and it doesn't have good cushions and it doesn't have uh, comforts, you're not going to be in a very good mood, right? So, I mean, it's more than just that. I don't want to reduce tones five and six to just creature comforts. 
but I certainly wouldn't want to exclude creature comforts either. So, oh wait, there's your key. Tones one and two, success. Tones three and four, respect. Tones five and six, feeling. If it's your sun earth, this is what puts you in a good mood. If it's the nodes, this is the kind of partner you're drawn to and what will put them in a good mood. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to do a follow-up where we do we look at some of the complexities here, some of the different nuances, and also go more into the nodes. And then we'll go on to the other keys, the resilience and the reactivity. And if you like this information, give Steve Rhodes a shout. This, this is pretty much his original research. You can find his work at bontu.com. I have no affiliation with him other than being a fan of this aspect of his work. B-A-A-N-T-U.com. Thanks for watching.